Here's a handheld spot welding machine from FNERSI. The model is SWM10. Now let's open the box together and see what's inside. Inside, we first see the user manual, which is available in common languages such as Chinese, English, Russian, etc. The spot welding machine is wrapped in a nylon bag and snugly placed in a shock-resistant foam tray. Below it, we have two copper electrode tips with eight WG electrical wires. We also have two replacement electrodes, a Type-C charging cable, as well as a spool of nickel wire. This is our spot welding machine. It's very compact and fits in the palm of your hand. You can see that on the back, there are the main technical specifications printed. We have a maximum welding current of up to 1200 A's. This spot welding machine can also charge other devices with a current of two A's and a voltage of five volts. It functions like a power bank with a built-in battery capacity. On the top of it, we can see a small hole for resetting the machine in case of serious errors. We can use a paper clip to poke into the hole and reset the machine. Next to it is a USB-A port for charging other devices and a Type-C port for charging the internal battery of the machine. Adjacent to them is the power button of the machine. It is also used to switch between two working modes. One is the power bank mode and two is the spot welding machine mode. On the front, we also have an LCD screen, three LED indicator lights, two up-down buttons, and a menu button. Above them are two sockets for connecting the welding pens. We hold the power button for about two seconds to turn on the machine. Press the power button once again to switch between the working modes. In the power bank mode, the screen will display the voltage, charging current, and charging power. In spot welding mode, you will see on the screen all the parameters such as battery voltage, battery temperature, battery level. The first line is the weld nugget heating time, typically set to three millisecs. You can change these parameters if needed. The second line is the welding time, which varies depending on the thickness of the nickel strip. I usually set it to 10 millisecs. The third line is the number of welds in one cycle which I typically set to two. At the bottom is the actual welding current and a weld count. Next, I will try to weld a strip of nickel onto a pair of scissors. I believe it will be much more challenging than welding nickel strips onto a battery. Uh, as you can see, with a welding time of 10 millisecs, the nickel strip has adhered very securely to the scissors, and the nickel strip tore when pulled off.
The actual welding current reached over 700 ohms, a tremendously high figure. Remember that conventional arc welders typically produce currents around 100 S during operation. A more challenging task is welding a nickel strip onto a rusty computer power supply casing using iron. It's old and showing signs of corrosion. Surprisingly, the nickel strip is welded very securely and tears when I pull it off. Here are three 18650 batteries I salvaged from an old laptop battery. I will weld these three batteries in parallel to replace an old power bank. You can see that the old power bank, which should have ended up in the trash, has been rejuvenated. It's truly wonderful. Here is an oscilloscope from the Fnirsi brand. It's fantastic, but one drawback is that it always needs to be connected to a 5 volt power source to function. Today I will use six 2000 mAh batteries to install inside it. This will transform the Fnirsi oscilloscope into a portable one. I can take it to test electrical devices without relying on a power outlet. Based on my estimate, it can work continuously for 10 hours when fully charged. Here is a 5 volt boost circuit that I salvaged from an old power bank. It has the function of charging the battery and converting the 4.2 volts voltage of the battery to 5 volts. Thank you. 
Next, I just need to solder the batteries in the correct positions. The charging power source will be soldered to the micro USB port and the five volts output voltage will be taken from the USB A port. Connect the oscilloscope to the five volt line. The oscilloscope is now functioning normally. The oscilloscope upgrade project has been successful. All that's left is to securely fasten in the components and we are done. In summary, at a very affordable price point, the Nearsi SWM10 spot welding machine is definitely worth buying. It can bring many ideas to life and repair numerous electronic devices effectively.